churches you've called to revive our community and our nation and even the world. We believe that revival is beginning in us. And we thank you for it, Lord God. We will stay the course until we see it. Father, we thank you too in the name of Jesus. For all our friends, relatives, enemies, government officials, we pray, oh God, for his children, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers. We lift them all up in our hearts to you. Y'all pray for people you've been praying for, especially those who are lost. But you think are lost, you're not judging anybody, you just ask God to touch them. Father, we thank you for the names on our hearts. And we pray, Father, especially those in our church who have been praying for who are sick, that you would heal them. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, that you move mightily in this service. Let your word, O oh God, touch us, change us, and lift us up. And Father, we pray too in Jesus' name. Come Holy Spirit, let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can go to Ezekiel. We had one other prophet last week. And we got Ezekiel this week. So maybe this is a season for prophets. Amen. Whenever vile men are lifted up, you know, God can raise up prophets. We saw that last week. Yes, sir. And so, <laughs> I don't want to call nobody vile. You can just let the shoe fit, whoever that is. When they are lifted up, then there's violence there all around, Psalm 12 says, doesn't it? Yes. But we know we're not despondent or down or counting on anything in the world. God raises up prophets. He raises up a people. He raises up his own in times like these. So I, I know that you need to understand why you're looking for another person to be to rise up. I want you to rise up. Yes, sir. I want you to realize the work ahead of us is not the work of any one person, any one church, any one uh, ministry. That work is God's people. He want to raise you up. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us just so used to just coming to church and just, just listening to the word, we don't understand God wants to use you. There was a young man, man named Ezekiel who was in captivity. And uh, he really was a priestly man. But he was in Babylon. He was not where his temple was or his church or where, where he, he scattered out away from Jerusalem. And he's in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And even in his captivity, not even where he could find his temple, because to them, the temple was everywhere. Not like us. You know, uh, we're everything, but in, in Israel, the temple was everything. Yes. Everything spiritual, everything good about Israel was centered in that temple. The temple was their life. And here they are in Babylon, far away from the temple. And I want you to know that God is everywhere. I don't care what situation we're in today. I got plenty of them. You know, sometimes I just want to lament about them. And, uh, but it don't do you any good, does it? You know, but I want you to see that no matter what situation you're in, where you are, that God wants to use you in that place where you are. Sometimes we want things to get fixed. Sometimes we want things to change before we do what God called us to do. But I think you need to look around. There are probably a lot of things you can be doing right now. And you need to stand up on your feet and begin to stop sulking into your troubles and your trials and the things that are going on and things that are going wrong. Thank you. And I want you to start thinking about standing on your feet. And that's the name of this, this message today. Stand up on your feet. Now you've heard the song. We've preached it before. But today I want you to see that even in captivity or in slavery, God wants to use you. Yes, sir. So surely he can use you, you old free people. Yes. <laughs> Listen, now our God is an awesome God. Yes. Where you are right now, yes. and most of you in here, God's already using you. But I want you to know that how hard life can get sometimes, well, I can tell you, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how many problems you have, the Lord can come through that darkness and call you to do something. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He don't want you to be held down, and he don't want you to hold your head down. He wants you to look like the song says, look up to the hills. Yes. Yes. He wants you to understand, just like Ezekiel, I'm in captivity, I'm chained up, I don't even have my temple around me. I don't have my friends around me. I'm out here. I got a priestly call. But I have no temple to be a priest in. 
How, how bad can it be? I don't even have a temple. But in, in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1, it says, He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, verse 1, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me up and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. Listen. This man's in captivity. He's in trouble. He's not even near his temple. He's a priest. God calls him and says, Son of man, stand up on your feet. Some of us are bent down in our problems, held down with our strife, worried about all kinds of things. And so we're not able to, to step out and, and just stand on our feet and do something. Sometimes we get so weak and so tired, there's only one way we can do it. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. It's the spirit of the Lord that will lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you standing in your own strength. When you've done all, you stand. But hey, look, when I'm weak, yes. he is strong. Come on, yes. Today, I want you to see that God is not calling you just to sit in church and listen to me. God is calling you to stand up on your feet and do something. And you say, well, what is he calling me to do? Do what's near you. If you're in Babylon, listen to him. Whatever captivity you might have, whatever problems you got, you need to stand on your feet right now and stop finding excuses not to do the work of God. There's lots to be done in the kingdom of God. People are hurting. People have needs. And while we're looking at what we're supposed to be doing, it's right there before you. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. And start doing the work of God. Stop just sitting back and stand on your feet. And, and get ready for a move of God. You see, prophesying tells you what you might not be able to see. This young man will not see the things that God is uh, talking to him about in the natural, but he sees it all in the spirit. He will see God in the spirit. He can see anything in the spirit. And see, it's that prophesying inside of you that, that leads you to want to fight and get up off your feet. It is that, that spirit that is in you that's greater than anything in the world. That's what we got to start pulling on, what is in us. That's where your strength comes from. Yes. It's the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Last week, we had a move of God. But hey, look, we didn't know how to suck it all in. We didn't know how to just stand up and receive it, some of us. Some of us were just scared, period. But you know the truth is, what's in you is greater than anything in the world. You want more of Him. Come on, sir. So that you can do the work He has called you to do. Yes, sir. Why are you waiting to do work? He's already got you doing something. Yes, yes. It's right there before you. If you have to make a phone call, if you have to have a donation, or uh, you have to you have to join somebody else's ministry at work, or you got to clean up the church or cut the grass, whatever it is that God puts before you, stand up and do it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 I think too many times we sit and wait for something to happen. That's a trick of the devil. Every, I, I can go back in my own ministry life and look back and see that I never really waited for nothing. I kept doing something, whether it was a cell leader, a section leader, whether it going to help somebody walk in the street, giving somebody food. Whatever it was, I was out there doing the work of God. Yes, sir. I didn't have to work to be called to be a pastor to work for God. Hallelujah. Y'all know that. I know some people who are called to do health and they do all kinds of things behind the scenes to help somebody else. Amen. I want you to get out of your selfishness. And I want you to stand on your feet and say, you know what, God? I'm in a place where you can use me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I don't care what's going on and how bad things are, but you can <laughs> use me even in captivity. Yes. You can use me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to be like dead bones. If yes. you turn with me to Ezekiel 37. I, I want to be used by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I can just go through all of the prophets and all of them who were called by God didn't do anything in their own strength. They did it by the power of the Spirit. Yes, sir. So just when you think you're not equipped or you're not ready, God said, yeah, you're ready. Come on, sir. With my Spirit, you can do anything. Yes, sir. We want to raise up a bunch of people who feel like I can do anything in Christ who strengthens me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are tired of people finding no reasons not to participate, not to do what they're called to do.
finding reasons waiting on what? Yes. Yes. What you waiting on? Come on sir. It's not by your strength y'all will be doing anything anyway. That's it. Yeah, that's right. It seems to me that the more I begin to serve God, the more problems I seem to have. Mm -hmm. It looks that way, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But the good news for us is that he teaches us how to walk by faith. Yeah. Don't look at these situations. Look at him. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, if you, if you stop looking at the water, you won't sink. If you look at him, you might keep walking. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. See, I just want you to think about it because I have a bunch of real capable people who don't realize God's calling them right now. They're waiting for something magic to happen. A voice to come out of the clouds. <laughs> Come up hither. You know, when the word is near you. It's near you, yes. It's right there near you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we sitting around waiting for what? I don't know. But you need to do with the ministry that God has put before you. you, you just, your ministry is not just to come to church. That's to serve you. Your ministry is to go out and do something. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. 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 How many of y'all ready to stand on your feet and do something? Hallelujah. 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 You know, I'm hoping and praying that we get an army of people ready to do something. Because the few people you have working in this church, I know we can't bring a revival by ourselves. We need more people, don't we? In Ezekiel 37, and I, I just go here because that's where the Lord told me to go, so that's where I'm going. Listen, in, in, in Ezekiel 37, the hand of the Lord, verse 1, was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. This is just NIV. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, now, you and I would have said, no, these dry bones can't live. Because we ain't walking in the spirit or by faith. Oh, we. You see a bunch of dry bones, and somebody asks you, are they going to live? You're not going to say, only you, oh Lord, know that. You're going to say, no. But see, when you're in the spirit, all things are possible. Hallelujah. He said, I said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Obedience. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling of sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O breathe, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath entered them, and they came to life, and did what? Stood up on their feet at a vast army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, while you're thinking and worrying, God can put together everything he needs. He needed an army? He just took some dry bones and said, prophesy to these bones. He, he just said, but there was something missing. It wasn't enough for them to just have flesh. It wasn't enough for them to have bones and muscle. They needed the Holy Ghost. Yes. They need the breath of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Ezekiel, when he was called, he needed something to breathe on him. He needed the Spirit of the Lord to come upon him. It's the Spirit of the Lord that had him prophesying. Mm -hmm. Not by power or might, but by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. That's how we all should enter into ministry. It's because it's the Holy Spirit that's breathing on us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not by your strength. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's by the power of God that yes. anyone should enter in to do the work of God. Yes. We step out where we are, but we step out in the Spirit. 
Yes. You're not just flesh and bones. You need to be breathable. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You see, you need to have the breath of life. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I get so drained. Yeah, even this morning when I got up and I walked in the, in, the, in the office there, I was so drained and so tired. I was just like, when Leon was up and put the mic on me back there, I was like, I am so tired. I don't know if I'm going to get up here and say anything. I don't know why I'm so tired. Just spiritually drained me. I don't know. But as I listen to the praise and worship and, and as I begin to step up here and walk out in God, it wasn't by my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was by His Spirit. Yes. The thing is, when you're tired and you're down and you're frustrated and everything don't look right, you need to start stepping out. Yes. Yes. And just let the power of God move you. I tell you, I guarantee you, if you walk by faith, if you take a step of faith, he will send his spirit to strengthen you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're just sitting back into your troubles and do nothing for God, and don't just stand up on your feet and say, Lord, I'm just here to serve you. What can I do for you? Yes. That's what you ought to ask in every bit of trouble you're in and every bit of stress. Lord, what can I do for you today? Hallelujah. I'm going to stand up and step out in Jesus' name. I don't want to turn all these scriptures. But Joshua, when he, he was winning every battle. He was winning every battle. But he, he gets in this one battle, and this guy Aiken goes in there and does something he ain't got no business. <laughs> Brings him into the camp after they and then they totally defeated yes. by the enemies. He wasn't used to being defeated. Joshua, you ain't used to being defeated of him. <laughs> Not used to being defeated. Something gotta be wrong. Yes. My Lord. Something gotta be wrong. Yes, sir. Yes. We get upset with the Lord when things don't work out. Yep. Joshua put his face to the ground. Joshua was, was upset. He was calling on God. He was crying out to God. What the heck is going on? You told me to go do this. But I, I'm losing. I've lost this battle. How can this happen to me? I'm in your will. I'm supposed to be doing what you told me to do. Yes, sir. And the Lord said to Joshua, stand up on your feet. And listen, mm -hmm. they're sinning the camp. Mm -hmm. my, my, my. So that's why destruction and defeat came upon you. You have sinned in the camp. Joshua was so distraught before the Lord spoke to him. He had torn his clothes and, and was crying out to God. Sometimes we're in that same kind of situation wondering why we feel defeated. My Lord. We look back and we say, I know I'm in the will of God. I know it's God who told me to come and do what I'm doing. Come on, sir. But why is, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we get down, you can hear from God. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. When there's nobody else around you to lift you up. My, my, my. When you feel defeated, tired, yes, out of breath. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> but just get ready to hear his voice right there. Yes. yes. And when you hear his voice, he says, stand up on your feet. Stand up. I tell you what's going on. Yes, sir. And I tell you how to fix it too. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in, in Isaiah's day, uh, <clears throat> the Lord he was chosen, chose Israel. He told Israel, He said, Now just rise up. Even though you're a small nation, mm -hmm. it's time for you to rise up. Jeremiah, you know him, young man. That the Lord commanded, He will fight for you. Yes. And He will rescue you. Yes. The Lord will fight for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He told Daniel. Daniel had been praying, just like you've been praying, and praying, trying to understand. Almost 21 days, he didn't hear nothing. And an angel came to Daniel as Daniel was like, what's going on? I can't hear. I've been praying and I don't hear an answer yet. How many times have you been praying and ain't heard an answer yet? My Lord, Jesus. Well, you know what the Lord told Daniel? That, that angel he sent, he said, stand up. And listen to the words of God. Yes. See, all you need to understand is sometimes prayers do get hung up, huh? Yes. But the, new, the truth is, God has an appointed time. And he'll say, stand up and listen to my words. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. 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 And he told Daniel, your prayers had already been answered. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. They were coming on down. Yes. Hallelujah. But there was some obstruction in the way. Mm -hmm. But see, if you didn't wait for him, Come on, sir. if you didn't stay strong in him, yes, sir. and you would have given up or fainted, yes. an angel will never have reached you to tell you yes. that your prayer 
have been answered Come on, when sir. you first yes. prayed. Come on, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you waiting for God? God has already sent an answer. Yes. Why you think he's not paying attention, he's already set it up for you. Yes. All you need to do is keep on believing. Stay strong in your faith. Yes. And stand up and listen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And Micah, he pleaded his case for Israel. And the Lord said, stand up then. Mm -hmm. How many times have you been pleading your case? And you just down on your face. Well, if you like me, that's where I start off. Down on my face right here. Mm -hmm. That's where I start. But every single time I got like that, when I get down on my face, come in this church by myself, I don't know if some of y'all sneak in here and see me or not. <laughs> but I'm stretched out on this floor here. Yes. When I get like that, and I can count them on hands and toes. <laughs> And when I get like that, he always picks me up. Thank you. He doesn't talk to me on the floor. He doesn't talk to me with my face in the carpet. But all of a sudden, I can get up. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I can stand up. Thank you, Lord. And I can sit down. Thank you, Lord. But either way, that's when I hear. Yes, sir. When I get up off the floor and stand up, I can hear. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Today, some of y'all need to get up off the floor yes, sir. and stand up, stand up so you can hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Today, I want you to just think about it and pray. And I want you to just see that the Lord has something good for you to do for him. And I want you to get out of yourself and out of your pain and out of what people say and what you think of yourself and your imaginations. And I want you to say, God, Right where I am today, I'm ready to stand up and do something for you. Yes, yes. Right, right today. With all the problems I got, no matter how young and tired I feel, no matter how busy I am, I am not too busy for you, Lord. I want you to use me right here. Yes. You know, when God begins to use you in the things you have right before you, that's his first step to bringing you into a greater ministry, if there is one for you. Sometimes we think the greater ministries are all that. They are nothing. Take it from somebody who knows it. You're nothing but a servant of the living God. Yes. Yes. Somebody else's problems are waiting on your heart all night long. You and your wife are struggling with everybody else's issues. Yes, sir. And you already got yours. <laughs> so if you think there's some luxury in that. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. There's nothing but blessings in it. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Nothing can make me happier than to serve someone else Thank other than God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Today, I want you to know God wants you to stand up. <clears throat> and he wants you to get out of yourself. Yes, sir. You know, there's a healing in the book of Acts. I want you to turn to it for me. And I only use it as an illustration, and then we're going to pray. And I'm hoping to God that you understand the spirit of Christ is a spirit of prophecy. Don't you be afraid to see what is not there. And you need to encourage your young people, especially with the message last Sunday. You need to encourage them. That's a spirit of prophecy in them. Amen. They can see what's ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just teach them to trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. They have eyes to see better than we can. Yes, one thing wrong with our generation, they don't have that confidence that God can use them right where they are at 15, 16, 17. Some people say Mary was 14 when she was pregnant with Jesus. So God can use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Acts chapter 14, <clears throat> I believe God still heals. So sometimes we think it's done just by magic. I don't know why. But everything done in the Bible, in the New Testament especially, and the Old, is done by the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Ghost, or you don't know Him through the Spirit of God, you're even born again by the Spirit of God. Come on, sir. You're saved by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get healed, it's not by magic, it's by the Spirit of God. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes we we think that we've been, we have been, have not been taught 
that had the person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. I know that's the biggest struggle I have since I've been here 19 years. Mm -hmm. Is that we can't get people to see that gift of God is, is there for you. It was right here Sunday. Yes, sir. Right here Sunday. I mean, big time. And all somebody had to do is say, God, I want all of you. Mm -hmm. That's all you do is open up your spirit. Yes, sir. But we got to get rid of religious thinking. Yes, sir. We got to get that freedom back. Yes, that sir. God can use me. Yes, that God, I don't have to just be in a Catholic church or a Baptist church. I can just go to church and get God. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I can skip, up all, skip over all the rituals, the white uniforms, the fans. I can skip over all that. Yes, sir. And just say, come Holy Ghost. Amen. And fill me up. Baptize me <laughs> in the Holy Spirit. We yes. need a baptism in the Holy Spirit because you can't do anything without the Spirit. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, you won't last long. Let's put it that way. It, look, in, in Acts chapter 14, go down with me to verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 8. In Lystra, there was a, a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth. And they had never walked. You see where it is? Mm -hmm. He listened, say listen, yes. to Paul as he was speaking. Are you listening? He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, read it with me, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. Hey, look, it's not by power of might, it was by the Spirit of the Lord that that man jumped up and walked. Mm -hmm. yes. It wasn't Paul's eyes. It wasn't even his words. Mm -hmm. He saw this man have faith in him. Yes. This man had a measure of the faith that Romans, that Romans 12 talks about. Mm -hmm. And Paul just looked at him and saw the faith yes. and said, stand up on your feet. Yes. Yes. Because he knew the Holy Spirit was there for you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all you need to stand up and do something. You just need God. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. You can look back and say, I flunked out of school and I didn't do this and I got five kids at home. I got a job working seven days a week. Let me tell you something. Say, God, use me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and say, come Holy Spirit. That's what I want you to do today. I want you to just say, I've got to stand on my feet. I'm tired of being defeated, down, depressed, on, and let my troubles and my trials, when I know God called me to do something, I'm just going to step out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if I don't step up and step out, I won't get the spirit to move from me. I never walk. I was born lame. <laughs> yes, sir. I was born lame. Mm -hmm. I never thought about I could walk. How could I get out of the mess I am? I never did it before. But the Spirit of the Lord can quicken your body. Yes. Can raise up dead bones. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He surely can use you. <clears throat> Today I want you to step up and stand up on your feet and receive what God has for your ministry, Hallelujah. your work. Do something in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we think we got to make these great excursions when right next door, right, right around the street, two ladies here today, there's ministries everywhere that God can call you to help. Yep. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of worrying about getting days, you need to be out there trying to fight to save somebody else. Hallelujah. 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 This is what I want you to see. I want you to move in the spirit today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. I want you to get ready when I pray to say, don't stand up till you're ready to do something. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I want you to, to, to just say, God, use me. If a man lame from birth never walked in his life, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. can just stand up. How much more can you do? Yes. By the power of the spirit. Yes. How much more can you do instead of sitting back and saying, I got to do this, I got to wait, I got to I gotta wait till I get out of Bible school. No, you don't have to wait till you get out of Bible school. It's time to step up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to do that? Oh, I'm talking to the people already doing that. But I 
none of you can be used. None of y'all been lame from birth. Not a one in here. If the Holy Spirit can raise up a crippled man, crippled from birth, he can use you right where you are. Yeah. I want you to say, come Holy Spirit, move on me today. Don't let my trial hold me back. Ezekiel was in Babylon in captivity when God called him. Now God told him, say, stand on your feet, young man. You don't need the temple. You don't need Jerusalem. You don't need your wicked king. All you need is the Holy Ghost. That's what I want you to see. I just want you to just pray with me. And I want you to receive what we should be receiving every time we come to church. You should be receiving more of God. When you feel like the Holy Spirit is going to be moving on you right now, I want you to start standing up and say, God, I got some obstacles in my way. I got some trouble. I don't even have enough money. But what I do have, I make available to you today. Just as I am right now.
want you to do is stand up on your feet. Yes. Now you can't get out of here without doing that. But what I want you to stand up in is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Not your own strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to encourage your children. Hey, look, God puts something in you. It's time for you to stand up in it. You don't have to wait till you graduate. You don't have to wait for nothing. Yes. Just do like some of the young people in our church. Just get out, step out, and do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you leave today, just tell somebody when you walk out of that door. Stand on your feet. Yes. Almighty Father, we bless your holy name. Oh God, bless your people and bless them throughout the week, Father. Fill them with your spirit. And God, I pray that it's not by power or might, but it's by your spirit that you will guide them, strengthen them, lead them to do for others, Lord God. Bless them and bless them throughout the week, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell somebody, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet.